Houston and Pastor Jonathan Smith with uh, Freedom Baptist Church is here. Pastor, come up. And then after him, we have some weed blows here, pack 258. And once we do the Pledge of Allegiance, we're going to get y'all to come up when we do that, okay? Pastor, thank you for coming tonight. Sure. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. Lord, I thank you for these council members. And Lord, I pray that tonight you would give them clarity and wisdom. I pray that uh, all things that are said and done will be said and done with respect. And uh, Lord, that both the council members and those who are in attendance tonight will have uh, the best um, desire for the city in mind. And so, Lord, give them wisdom. Give them direction, give them vision, and Lord, give us uh, the city that you would have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Thank Pastor. We appreciate that. All right, Troop 258, come on up. Pat. Pat, excuse me, sir. We got a, got a cup. And we got an Eagle Scout mm-hmm. leading them. So our flag's in the corner, and we're going to let y'all come up. Just come right up here with us, and y'all help lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would that be all right? All right, you ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you all very much for helping us, okay? All right, Madam Clerk, we have roll call. Here. President. Here. 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 We're all here. Presentations, we have none, so we'll move to public hearing. See you 15 17. Good evening, Mayor and Councilman. Good evening. Um, item A is CU 15 17. Lee Eatman. The property is located on the west side of Miller Chapels Road between US 70 East and Wilson Street. The property is indicated in the red boundary line on the map. The applicant's requesting a conditional use permit to allow the operation of an automobile repair shop within the airport business zoning district. The property is zoned airport business and is located within the accident potential zone 1 and 7579 decibel noise overlay district for Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Previously, the property operated as an automobile repair shop. It has been more than six months since the facility was last operated and therefore a conditional use permit is now required. The submitted site plan, as you see on the screen, shows that the property contains an existing 1,965 square foot single story metal building. The hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with one employee. The floor plan consists of two working bays and office storage areas and restrooms. A private 60 foot wide paved road serves as an access easement extending from Miller's Chapel Road to the site. There is sufficient parking to provide for employees as well as customers. The applicant has indicated that there will be no outside storage on the site, therefore no screening is necessary. Existing vegetation surrounds the proposed site and this will satisfy the city's landscape requirements. According to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base, the proposed use is compatible as long as measures are taken to achieve a noise level reduction of 30 decibels will be incorporated into the design and construction of portions of the building where the public is received. At this time, there is no action necessary and the Planning Commission will have a recommendation for a council meeting on October the 2nd, 2017. Here are some pictures of the site. <coughs> Any questions? Any questions for Jennifer? All right, thank you, Jennifer. If not, this is a public hearing for CU 15 17 Lee Eatman requesting an additional use permit to allow the operation of an automobile repair shop within the airport business zoning district. Would anybody like to speak? Would anybody like to speak? All right, we're going to close this public hearing and move to the next. Item B is Z917, William T. Hayes. The property is located on the southeast corner of Mole Smith Lane and Double D Lane. The applicant's requesting a zoning change from R20A to RM9, which would allow for the placement of one manufactured home on an individual lot. 
Surrounding zoning to the north, east, and west, you have R20A residential, and to the south, you have RM9 and R20A residential. The property has most recently been occupied by one manufactured home, which was destroyed by fire. Since the unit was not replaced within a six month period, rezoning of the lot is necessary to allow the replacement at this time. Adjacent and surrounding properties primarily consist of single wide manufactured homes located on private lots. There are two lots to the south of the subject property, which were rezoned to RM9 residential in 2001. The city's land use comprehensive plan designates this property for low density residential development. The RM9 zoning district will require the manufactured home to comply with the city and state regulations. Manufacturers homes are required to have the appearance of a site built single family dwelling unit permanently located on the lot with a pitch roof, masonry underpinning parallel to the front property line and in good condition and with no signs of rust. Properties in this area are served by undedicated private dirt path through easements. As a result, the subject lot does not have frontage on an improved public street. The applicant has requested a modification of this requirement that all lots front on the improved street in order to allow placement of the mobile home. At this time, there is no action necessary and the Planning Commission will have a recommendation for the Council at their meeting on October the 2nd. Any questions for Jennifer? Okay, this is a public hearing Z917 William T. Hayes and requesting a zoning change from R20A to RM9. Would anybody like to speak? Would anybody like to speak? All right, we're going to close this public hearing and move to the next. Item C is a street closing for Herman Place. On March 6, 2017, the City Council asked the staff to investigate closing a number of unimproved street sections within the city limits. The street section, um, as identified on the map, has an approximate length of 300 feet and a right-of-way width of 50 feet. The petition street closing had been forwarded to the fire police, engineering, and public work departments for review. At this time, there's been no op op objections, excuse me, um, have been received. If the street is closed, ownership of the right of way will be split equally between the adjoining property owners and a utility easement will be retained over the entire closed right of way for maintenance of an eight inch sanitary sewer line. The council on August 21st adopted a resolution of intent setting the public hearing and that the resolution was advertised for four weeks in the newspaper. Adjacent owners were notified of the hearing by certified mail and the street was posted with notice of the public hearing. At this time, there's no action necessary. Planning Commission will have a recommendation at their October 2nd meeting. Any questions, Jim? This is a public hearing for a street closed on Herman, street, Herman Place. Would anybody like to speak for, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I'm Carl Steve Wayne Root from the Sheet Metal Company. Uh, we've been in this location since 1947. Uh, we used to have access on the other side going across the railroad tracks, but they closed that because they didn't want to maintain the road down there. Uh, this is the only access we have to get to our building, the road that you're closing. And uh, if you close that road, unless, if the two owners decide to do something different, I still have to have access to that build that road. Okay. Okay. So we'll take that under consideration and we yeah, appreciate it. So we'll that. Make an overpass. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Carl. sir. Anybody else want to speak? All right, we'll close this public hearing. And with that, we'll thank the Planning Commission for coming in tonight. We'll look forward to your decisions and appreciate all you do for us. And I guess with that, you are welcome to stay. Or I think I'll see a mass exodus in just a minute. Thanks, guys. Next, we have a public hearing uh, to allow the citizens the opportunity to comment on the City of Goldsboro Consolidated on Performance and Evaluation of Chicago. You're going to present that? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor City Council. Good evening. Good evening. Item D. Caper hearing is to allow citizens the opportunity to comment on the City of Goldsboro draft of the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, the CAPER, for entitlement grantees receiving CDBG and home funds. On July 1, 2007, the City of Goldsboro received $320,836 in CDBG funds and $159,629 in home funds from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, 
for fiscal year 2016-2017 to administer its community development block grant programs. The CAPER provided an opportunity for the city to assess the annual performance and to discuss what actions or changes it should take as a result of its performance. In addition, it is designed to provide information on how the city actually used its retirement funds during the most recent completed program year. During the preparation of this year's CAPER, the city has complied with all federal CDBG and home program guidelines to meet its citizen participation requirement. Therefore, it is a staff recommendation by motion after the public hearing for council to direct the staff to incorporate any comments at this public hearing into the city's CAPER and authorize the staff to submit any identified needs or comments received after the required comment period ends to HUD. Any questions? No questions? Mm -hmm. All right. But I just want to clarify something. I don't want people to think we got more money than we actually got. Okay. And so you said we got $312,836, and then it was additional funds for $159,629, right? Yes, sir. Okay, because we thought we heard $629,000. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, it sorry. was three hundred. I do apologize. And you all have been provided, which has been provided for citizens, um, the copy of this paper that shows exactly the breakdown of the funds, where it came from, and any prior year money as well, and program income that we received from loans that we have provided. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Okay. All right, this is a public hearing to allow citizens the opportunity to comment on the City of Goldsboro Draft, Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. Would anybody like to speak? Would anybody like to speak? Yes, ma'am. No, you got to come up here to this podium. I'm sorry. You can say anything that relates to this. To this. Yes. To this. It's, it's got to relate to this. Okay. Um, well, my first question would be is I'm not sure what the caper is, and I just wanted a more explanation of what it because I'm new to, to the meetings. It's our annual plan for an entitlement program that we have. Okay. Is that for the to help um, help with the city look better or grow better, or what is it for actually? I mean, to answer your question, that could be one of the things it's for. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So hopefully I can follow up. And I was just wanting to know, since you've made downtown look so beautiful, if you had plans to do anything to the secondary streets around it. Uh, yes, ma'am. We absolutely have plans. Okay. And my second question was, um, are you going to increase any police presence on Center Street so people aren't approached by um, people around four to six o'clock on Friday and Saturday evenings when people are try, trying to um, right. promote business downtown. I'm going to give you the best answer I can, and that is everybody has the right to panhandle, and we can't stop that. Okay. We can stop aggressive panhandling, and we try very much to do that, and we do have some we know to be aggressive. Okay. And when we see them, we try to relocate them. Okay. But, I mean, we, we, we can't, to be honest, and if I'm saying anything wrong, y'all correct me, but we can't okay. stop somebody from asking you for money. Okay. okay, thank you. But, 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 you don't have to give it to them. No. Because okay. there's plenty I of charities doing that, okay? Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else like to speak? If not, we'll close this public hearing and we will move on to public comment period. Would anybody in the, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me back up this minute. We had a motion there that we needed to take action on. The motion was after the public hearing to the direct the staff to incorporate any comments at the public hearing into the city's caper and authorize the staff to submit and the needs identified or comments received to the Department of Housing and Urban Development as the required comment period has ended. So that's a, a recommendation of staff. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same. Motion carries. Seven, no. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. All right, so now with that, we got public comment period. So if anybody in the office would like to speak for a period up to three minutes, we are more than welcome you at this time. Would anybody like to speak? Going once. Good evening, sir. Bobby Jones, Three East Chestnut Street. Yeah, Same question good. about the funds that she talked about, the 320000 plus. And I was concerned uh, at this point in time about how many people would have applied for those funds. And secondly, uh, would there be any opposition if members of the community try to support our community by helping others complete those applications? 
I think the best thing to do, Mr. Bobby, is let you talk directly to Chicago. Absolutely, we will help any. We would encourage anybody to help anybody to, to do the applications. I know she does a lot of outreach, trying to do the same thing. But I, I mean, I, I would say you directly take that question and, and let Chicago, because okay. she's going to be the best one to, to answer okay, that. Okay, because I'm, I'm specifically concerned because we had requested some application because to, to help and support some individuals, and someone said there would be a charge that we would have to pay for the for the applications. And uh, that kind of that that that's I've never heard that. what we're trying to that. do. Yeah, I've never heard that. And, and so that, uh, there again, I think you're going to get better straight answers. Okay, that did not come from her. That came. No. From yeah. So what I'm, what I'm asking you is if you if you'll just meet directly with her, and if you don't get what you need, then come back and let us know. But I think Chicago's more than qualified and, and, and has your answers. For I agree. Them. So what, what I think I hear you saying is that if if uh, citizens wanted to support community members. By having a complete application, they wouldn't have to pay. pay. Not, not anything that I'm. No, we the only thing no. they could be talking about is a copy and charge. And again, I think we can work through that if you're helping citizens to, to complete the application. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Bobby. And she calls here, so she'll be glad to, to help you with that. Anybody else want to speak? Anybody else want to speak? All right, we're going to close the public hearing and we'll move on to the consent agenda items. Mayor and Council, your consent agenda was items E through. In and you removed item M. So E through N, removed item M. I make a motion that we approve um, items E through N and we remove, we remove item M. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mayor Allen? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Preston Foster? Yes, ma'am. Council Member Williams? Yes. Council Member Broadway? Yes. Councilmember Stevens? Yes. Councilmember Ham? Yes. Councilmember Yes. The consent agenda is approved. Uh, items requiring individual action, we have none. Ma'am, you, you don't have any, but um, your clerk was able to pull together your boards and commissions item. If you want to consider that, sure. I'd be happy to pass those out to you. Sure. Um, the first group I'm passing around is what you had considered uh, in, a, in an August meeting, I believe. Uh, one was a Bob Waller being appointed to the GWTA board, and there were two recreation consent, uh, commission appointments. That is one. The other. We do have a handful of others, but they've not been recommended, and so we hadn't presented these others to you. So if, if you, I'm happy to share those with you, but they haven't got a recommendation coming to you yet at this point. Uh, we would be happy to try to have those. I assume we could have them in October. Um, but these were the ones that we had discussed with you previously. I move that we uh, accept the, the recommendation for the boards of the three people who are given. Yeah, yeah, that we, I, if you want to discuss them, I recommend you add them to the agenda. And then once they're added, then you can make a motion to approve them if you wanted to. So I move to add them to the agenda. So there's, okay, let's move in a second that we add them to the agenda. Any discussion on adding them to the agenda? Yes, I have, I, I have a question really quick before we move. Okay. Um, I understand um, uh, the, the, the Wayne Transportation Authority, um, this individual, I know he's served and, you know, he's served well, but um, we have a third term. And so I, I'd like to just put this, this one to the side and we can discuss this a little bit further. Um, well, well, right now all we're doing is add it to the agenda. So yes. let's, let's add them to the agenda and then, then, we, then we can- Okay, sure, that's fine. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. thank you. So there's been a motion and a second to add to the agenda. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, same. Motion carries. All right, so now this uh, appointment has been added to the agenda. So now it's open for discussion. Okay, so pertaining to the Transportation Authority, uh, the reappointment. Um, I'd like to put this uh, to discussion at a later date. Uh, this individual had, will be doing his third term. So I think that's, ex that's exceeding our term limits. Yep. No, it's not. The term limit is one, one year up to six years. And that was brought up uh, four years ago when the county uh, came up and that we had several members at that time who had served uh, nine and 10 years. But this would be only Mr. Waller's third year and he can serve up to six years. Okay, so the term limits for clarity on, on this board is? Is 
I no mean, more the, the than time six period. Years. The time no more period. than six years. Yeah, but the time period of each term. One year. Okay, so I apologize. That is my mistake, okay. and I can accept that. All right. So we can move forward with, with him as well. Okay. There's only one other, one other thing I was wondering about. Uh, you saying about hoteliers, and that was like I said, um, uh, Miss Gray, Judy Gray, had came to me and spoken to me about by uh, uh, being on travel tourism, and I think she had put her application in in two, in two different years, and I was wondering about. Um, why she had been on two, two separate occasions rejected. Well, I, I don't, uh, well, first off, we don't have any openings on travel tourism right now, okay. so, so I don't know the answer to your question, but she's not up here tonight to okay. be discussed. <coughs> and we can, the, uh, Laura heard your question and she can find, we'll find the answer for okay, you because that's the first I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but there is no opening, if I'm correct, there's no opening on travel tourism right now anyway. Right. So I don't think that would be a, okay. an issue tonight. Okay. All right, so is there a, what's your desire with the three in front of you? Let's make a motion and do it. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor of these three appointments, raise your right hand. Opposed? Likes? Motion carries 7 0. So these folks have been appointed to the board as of tonight. All right. Thanks, Mr. Manager, for reminding us about that. Now, we're done with idols requiring individual action. City Manager report? Uh, no report, man. City Attorney's report? No report. Uh, Mayor and Council Member report. I think I started with you last time. Okay. Mr. Acock? Um, this past Saturday attended two events that were noteworthy. Uh, Word of Praise Church and The Bridge uh, and some other groups collaborated and uh, had a community uh, expo day out uh, at the Word of Praise Church. And it was well attended, and uh, appreciate them inviting me. And I think it's something worthwhile to the community, and I, I really enjoyed them having. Them. Look forward to it again next year. And the second thing was the uh, 75th anniversary of the Fourth Fighter Wing at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Uh, it was good to see some of the old uh, uh, ex commanders there, and see some of the airmen I hadn't seen. And, command chief that I hadn't seen in a couple of years. And uh, it was something that Goldsboro and Seymour Johnson have worked hard together to have the relationship that we have. And I'm looking forward to the next uh, 75 years. Mr. Ham, No comment. Mr. Foster? Um, no comment. Mr. Stevens? Um, just wanted to say, uh, wish the, uh, everyone at the Air Force and they're on the airmen uh, well, I was unable to attend um, the 75th uh, celebration, but I, I heard it was really well attended and really well celebrated. And I wish I could have been there, but I send all my uh, well, warm well wishes to the Colonel and everyone out there I'm wishing you another great 75 years. And then also, um, as I continue to push forward, like they say, technology is to push it forward, is that um, I would like a little bit input from all of the community from the city of Goldsboro and Wayne County, what they think of uh, a higher speed, you know, internet and situation, what it would do for jobs and manufacturing and even pharmaceutical companies coming in this direction and bringing those kind of jobs. So what would you think about Google Fiber coming into this area? And I wish you would give me a call or give the city a call and uh, uh, let everybody know what you would think of that. So that's what I say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Broadway? No comment. Mr. Williams? No comment. All right, well, I got several comments. So first of all, our normal clerk, Melissa, has been out for the last week, and Laura has been diligently substituting for her and has done a great job. So I just want to thank you, Laura, for you. I know you've worked double duty at least the last week for sure. So we appreciate that and appreciate all you're doing to, to carry the office while Melissa's gone because it is probably a two-person office most days, right? So anyway, I do. Secondly, this past uh, weekend we had, or weekend before we had Beak Week, and I just want to thank all those who came out, number one, because anything we do, we need people to come out to it. But I thought the folks doing it, it was the best one I've been to. I think it's our fourth one, and it is growing. It is getting better. So I just want to thank everybody. I want to encourage everybody to come out and get more involved in it next year. Um, I do want to just mention that Governor Cooper was here this past week. He came to Carver Heights to bring some school supplies, kind of snuck in town to do that. But it was a neat thing, and the kids really loved it having him there and I think the teachers appreciate him 
and he sat down and talked one-on-one -on -one with some teachers and I'm sure they gave him an earful. So that, so that was really good. I do want to also say that uh, following up on what a couple other council members that this Saturday we did go out to the church where the Word of Faith and Bridge had combined. It, happened, it was a great event. I don't think all the council members were there and I just appreciate everybody coming, but more importantly, appreciate what they did trying to build unity in the community was their theme. And Pastor Dorch and, and the crowd out there, uh, Pastor Jimmy did a really good job with that. So we want to thank them. Also just want to let everybody know that the 123rd Southern District Convocation is in Goldsboro. It started this past Saturday. It runs all week. It's the church out on Oak Forest Road. Pat, uh, uh, Bishop Love and, and all, but they have a huge, huge crowd of folks you'll see in town this week. I'm going to tell you there's three or four hundred of them at least. Um, and I just encourage you, should you bump into any of them, I've asked them to go spend money, go into restaurants, go into shops. So if you should bump into any folks from out of town attending that convention, just welcome and thank them for being here in Goldsboro. Um, the last two things mentioned, following up on the uh, 75th anniversary, it was a great event. I will tell you that we had six former wing commanders here all six of them are now generals one of them is a four-star general who's in charge of all of acc so that's all air, air command come a pretty pretty big deal uh and he he was here about 10 years ago so he's gone from a colonel to a four-star general pretty quick and so we're, we're really proud of what these guys that have left seymour johnson have done and they still have seymour johnson in their heart kind of following up on that we also got the announcement about a week ago that we were going to be the base or the reserve base for the KC-46A tanker. That's a huge deal. They're going to spend about $200 million at the base getting ready for this tanker. And so it's just a big deal for Seymour Johnson. It's a big deal for our community. And I want to thank everybody, especially the airmen of Seymour Johnson, because they're, they are just, just first class, first class operators. And that's one of the reasons I think we got these tankers. And then um, lastly, this Friday night is the DGGC annual dinner, and I just, if anybody wants to come or hasn't got their ticket or whatever, I just want to remind everybody about that. And I think that's all I got. So you, you can't speak anymore, ma'am, I'm sorry. Just like what that dinner was? The, D, the D, Downtown Goldsboro Development Corporation annual dinner. And this is Friday night, and you can call the DGGC to get tickets. Uh, with that, we stand adjourned, and thank you everybody for coming. Thank you.